Good morning. You ready to worship the Lord this morning? Okay, let's start all over. Good morning. Are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Praise the Lord. Let's stand. I want to challenge you with something today. How many times have you ever just sang a song and at the end of it you don't even know what it said? You just heard some music going by. Let's not sing a song this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Pay attention to every word that uh, comes across the screen today, every word that comes out of our mouth. And let's let it soak in and uh, be a word from the Lord and a word to the Lord. Praise God. Who breaks the power? Of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings amen this is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, and I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son or daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and wonder? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. You are, Lord. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. You would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I can be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who conquered the grave. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the one who conquered the grave. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That he would take my place. We deserved it. That you would bear my Hallelujah. Cross. You would lay down your life. That I could be set free. Oh, Jesus has seen for all that you've done for me. Jesus. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Hallelujah. I'm glad what Jesus did for me. Praise the Lord. Look around this morning. You've got a lot of brothers and sisters here. and Maybe a new face around close to you. Let's greet each other and just give all the hugs that you can give away this morning. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. You would take my place. You would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I could be set free. Oh, Jesus. 
angels to sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son or daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and wonder? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. You would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. That I could be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amazing love. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. And I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Praise your name, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Jerry, there you are. Yep. <laughs> Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning, and I uh, just wanted to give everybody an update on the search committee. I know it's been a while since we've addressed that point. There's been a lot of us that have been gone and come back, and anyhow, in all that time period, the search committee has continued on and looked at a lot of different people, made a lot of decisions, and had a lot of interviews in the time span. So we have some real good prospects, and uh, we look forward to bringing them to you pretty soon. So I hope that will happen in the very near future. So just want to ask you for your prayers. Keep uh, praying for the committee and uh, looking to them, and we appreciate your patience, and, uh, you know, God bless. Brother Strand, at least they're not calling it the Search and Rescue Committee. <laughs> I tell you what, it's been a blessing to have the Strands here with us. And I, I, amen. <laughs> Praise God. But I know that they, they want us to have a pastor too. I'm, you know, I was just thinking a while ago, I'm not supposed to be speaking here this morning, but I got the microphone. But uh, I was thinking a while ago that I haven't been praying enough for a long time, Marsha and I, every morning before we left the house, when we pray together, I made that a matter of prayer. And I was just thinking a while ago, I haven't done that like I should be doing. So we need to be praying more. Amen. Let's do that. Praise God. Hosanna. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. See you. 
before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, let's pause on that thought right there. Have your way among us, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. We want you here. Father, we don't want to just take up time and just do a routine. Lord, we invite you from the depths of our spirit. Lord, we need you. Father, we need you. Lord God, to cleanse us and purify us, Lord. We want you here. We want to be like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed. find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our tears are washed away, washed away. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk 
in the wilderness, blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to you, praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all that it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. feel like I'm supposed to turn it to you right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. When you come to church, what kind of an attitude do we bring when we come? Do we come in expectancy? Do you come in faith? Let's read a little bit of the word before we pray. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up. The waves broke over the boat so that they were nearly swamped. Ever been in that kind of a storm? Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Pat, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down. It was completely calm. 
He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? A word for our day. Do you still have no faith? Faith drives out fear. Love drives out fear. Fear has torment. Love and faith are the answer to fear. They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? He's Jesus. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Hallelujah. How many of you are riding in a storm this morning? How many of you need to hear him say, peace in your heart? Do not be afraid, the word for today. Do not be afraid of the future. Do not be afraid of the present. Do not be afraid of what might happen or what will happen. Jesus is still in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just give him praise for the God that he is among us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And one of the things out of that little story, they were not afraid to go to Jesus and wake him. Help us. Help us. Help us. How many of you here today have a need that just seems to be tenacious? Everything you've done and tried to do, it just hasn't happened. Are you ready to pray again? Are you ready to pray for somebody else, believing in faith with them? How many of you have that kind of stubborn needs in your life that just don't seem to yield to anything you've tried to do and you need to go again? Do we have anybody here that has that kind of need? Just put your hand up. And if you don't have a hand up, look for somebody who does have their hand raised and let's go to them and with prayer, let's call upon Jesus this morning. Let's call upon him. Get your hand up if you need prayer whoever you might be, somebody to pray with you over those stubborn needs that just don't seem to yield. And we come again. We're going to come again. We're going to come again. We're going to pray again. We're going to pray again in Jesus' name. Now, as we pray, as we pray, we pray in faith, we pray in hope, and we pray with an answer in mind. In the name of Jesus, we are joined together this morning, Lord, in prayer. We come before you with the need of a brother or a sister today. In the name of Jesus, still the storm in the life. Peace be still. Speak it again to our hearts in Jesus' name. And Lord, we give you praise and thanks because you're the God among us. You can still still the storm. You can still quiet the need. You can bring peace into every heart and every life this morning. And in your name, we give you praise. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in the service this morning in this moment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we believe. In the name of Jesus, we declare our faith. There is power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be healed, be whole, be well. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break.
Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's a an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. One more time, not just part of them. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus. Lord, we yield ourselves to you this morning. God, I just feel like you're trying to tell us to just forget about program and hear your heart, hear your voice, focus on you this day. Lord, it's all about you. It's not about us. God, you made it about us. We have to make it about you. Lord, today we make it about you, God. We want you to know that we love you. And we worship you. You are worthy of all of our praise, Lord. Lord, you are the one who saved us. You paid the price. You're the one who brings deliverance. Lord, you're the one who paid the price for this town, for this church, this community, for our nation, for our world. It's all about you, Lord God. God, we lift you up this day. God, in the name of Jesus, we exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord God. Only you, Lord. Only you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The devil's a liar. He can make all the noise he wants. <laughs> Praise God. Time to receive our offering, which is another part of our worship this morning. Don't step out of focusing on the Lord. Michael and Kara are here with us this morning, which I'm mighty excited about that. And uh, they brought a couple of little munchkins with them, too, and I'm real excited about that. So, so. Brother Carl, would you thank the Lord for our tithes and offerings, sir? It's good to be back home with you guys. So we drove we drove in Wednesday night. I had a wedding this weekend with a friend of mine. We drove in late Wednesday night, and uh, we could tell whenever we got out of the hills, it just was flat. So it, uh, we missed those hills a little bit, but it's always fun to be back home with you guys. So...
lost when you found me here And I was broken beyond repair And then you came along And you sang your song over me I feel like I'm born again I'm living for the very first time for the very first time in my Isn't technology great? When it works. When it works. We're glad to be home. After a couple of weeks gone, hey, feels like coming home. Thank you. Thank you. We had a great time. Uh, what we've done is not simply to get a vacation from you, but we, we made a commitment a number of years ago that we would make graduation from high school very special for our grandkids. So, beginning with that first time, we took them on a cruise to build memories. It's hard to get teenagers to sit down and talk eye to eye. So we took, we've taken six grandkids on a special cruise for graduation. This past week, we took grandkid number seven, Benjamin, for his memory, all on the same ship. And so they all had the same memory. You've got to treat them all alike. And we got one more to go. 
if we survive for another three years, we'll have that one as well with it. So that's where we were. And we got to come home, and we have to rest after we got home. Try to keep up with a teenager. And of course, Grandpa, can I drive? <clears throat> he loves my car because you can put the foot into it. He just, oh. well, anyway, Grandma is in the back seat saying, Benjamin? Benjamin, 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 <laughs> Benjamin, slow down. Well, anyway, had a great time. Come back home. God's good. Now, there's some speculation. All of it is on. Try the mic, the other mic, too. Put that one aside. Turn this one on. Contact, thank you. All right. We are got it. We've got it made now this morning. <clears throat> there is some speculation. If you got your bulletin and you open it up, and there is the calendar for the year, or for the month rather, uh, the 28th of June is blank. What does that mean? It means that we're not going to be here on that particular Sunday again. We're gluttons for punishment. But it's a commitment I made long before I thought we would be done with our responsibility here. It's, I'm going to represent you at the International Booksellers Convention in Orlando, Florida over that weekend, and uh, you pray for us as we go, and uh, we're going to be there signing a new book into the book industry, and we will represent Sykeston's First Assembly to the rest of the world on that day and week, so don't think anything else into that particular date because it's blank. We'll let you know what's going to happen. But coming up is Father's Day in two weeks. Now, a little girl was describing to me, I asked her about Father's Day, and she said, well, Father's Day is just like Mother's Day, only the presents are as not, aren't as nice. So we're going to try to do our best, gentlemen, to take care of all of you and treat you as well as we treat women on Mother's Day, but on Father's Day. So invite Dad, Grandpa, uncles, everybody you might, and we're going to have a special Father's Day celebration if the Lord will allow that to happen in our lives at that particular time. Well, life is great and life is wonderful. It's Communion Sunday, and if you haven't caught any of our communion services, we are in the process of taking a look at the analogy that Paul the Apostle has pictured for us so ably and so wonderfully. He talks about the relationship of the body of Christ. Now, when you look at the body of Christ... Two things come to mind. The actual physical body of Jesus Christ that he lived in when he was on this earth. And the second meaning of the body of Christ is the church that he left behind. So we are the body of Christ. So we differentiate between the two of them. But Paul was interested in making sure that all of us understood the analogy of the physical body to the actual spiritual body, the body of Christ. And so he's written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in Ephesians and in a couple of other places about that relationship. So if you have your Bible, we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We begin reading um, at verse 12. Now Paul is talking about spiritual gifts in this entire chapter. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant, verse 1. Verse 4, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. Verse 7, now to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, the individuality. Now verse 12, he talks about the body. That's our focus this morning. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. Though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks or slave or free or southern Missouri people, we are all given the one spirit to drink. Verse 14. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Then he talks about the foot and the hand and the eye as being part of the body. Verse 18. But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Then he goes down to conclude that in verse 27. Now, you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first 
apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, gifts of administration. Then he says, verse 29, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? And the answer is no. Do all work miracles? No. Do all give you gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But eagerly desire the greater gifts. And he talks about that great length in Ephesians. So, we're talking about, in the body, skin this morning. Skin. Have you ever thought about skin and the analogy of what it is to the body of Christ? What skin is to the human body? It's midnight, 1 a.m. in the morning, all's dark. And the night is pierced with that all too familiar sound. Mommy, Daddy. With great presence of mind as you come out of your foggy sleep, you say, Honey, Mommy and Daddy are right here. Quiet has followed. Then another voice says, can I come and get into your bed? One of you says, are you afraid, honey? It's almost a whimper. Yes. And always thinking, always alert, either parent then speaks up with the final answer. Honey, you don't have to be afraid. God is there with you. And you lay down, that's got to take care of it. And a silence again, and all of a sudden, the answer comes back. But I want someone with skin. Why? That's the cry of the world in which we live. I want somebody who has skin. Why? Dr. Seltzer, a surgeon, writes, What is it then that this seamless body stocking, some two yards square, that is our casing, our facade, it flushes, pales, perspires, glistens, glows, furrows, furrows, tinkles, crawls, itches, ages, pleasures, and pains us all of our days. And at once it's the keeper of everything that's on the inside. Skin. Skin. Dr. Margaret Brandt who is an ophthalmologist, led a medical surgical team into an area of India that had been devastated by five years of drought. Conditions were absolutely horrible. And as they were set up this medical clinic, people straggled in from the countryside, hoping for something to eat, just even a parcel of bread some way, something to eat. And many of them even volunteered to have needless surgery so they could get something to eat at this medical clinic. In fact, one or two of them volunteered to give an eye if they could get some food. It was that serious. And so they were performing operations, doing all kinds of things with them. But she was the ophthalmologist and centered on eye surgeries and eye help. But young boys are everywhere. And when you've been in a foreign country, you understand these young boys are everywhere. And Dr. Margaret Brand was assigned as a helper, a shy, dark-skinned 12-year-old boy who stood on a box near her, uh, impressively in an gown, a hospital gown wrapped around him, with strict instructions to hold the three battery flashlight exactly as she was operating on the eyes of somebody else. And he did it for five patients without any problem, exactly as he would move it wherever she wanted while she's performing cataract surgeries on eyes. Now this is before laser surgery was taking place and they were out in the remote area. They didn't have access to laser surgery at that point. So everything went fine while she's performing the cataract surgery. He performed the task perfectly, but they got the uh, patient number six. And holding and during the case of number six, he faltered. The light would show and then he'd go off. And, and she kept saying, little brother, show the light properly, which he would momentarily do and then it would go off again. And soon it was a dangerous bob away from where she's cutting. And Margaret stopped to ask if he was feeling well. What's the matter? Tears ran down his cheeks and he stuttered, oh, oh doctor, I cannot look. This one is my mother to see the doctor slice an eye open, remove that and slice it and sew it back. Ten days later, the boy's suffering was over, however. His mother's stitches were removed, the team put on her eyeglasses, and she blinked in the light. And all of a sudden, for the first time in her life, she saw her son. 
through the cataracts that have been no longer there. My son, she said, I thought I knew you, but today I've seen you. So when we look at somebody, what do we see? Skin. When we look at you this morning, we see skin. This humble Indian lady expressed that her son had become a recognizable image. Our images, our impressions, our memories of people packaged in that one visible organ by which we remember one another is because we see his skin. Now the world is looking to see Jesus packaged in human health, in human strength, in human persons. They are looking for skin when they look at us. They're looking for Jesus. And we are to be the perfect image resulting and reflecting Jesus Christ. Skin is like a window to what happens on the inside of the body. For instance, anemia will show within the body by looking at the skin and the nails. Jaundice makes the skin turn yellow. Diabetes can make the skin turn a bronze color. And lack of oxygen will make the skin turn purple. Scurvy and beriberi and all kinds of things are shown on the skin. Cancers can leak to the outside in a mole or a sore and become a melanoma. Skin. It provides the window into the emotional health of the spirit. We cannot make our skin twitch like a horse, but just look at the skin on a person's face and you can read volumes. Mark Twain said, Man is the only animal who blushes or needs to blush. Sometimes the body revolts and reveals the true sentiment in spite of all that we can do, blushing. Now, it's the swelling of blood vessels that involuntarily rushes 50 times as much blood to the surface of your skin that makes you blush. The young people and young girls blush more than older people do. Women blush more than men, but no one is exempt from this thing called blushing. Skin. There's no other organ like it. It weighs about nine pounds per person. Some of you have less, some of you have more, but it folds and flexes and wrinkles and crinkles and molds to the contour of the body. What's inside? It can be as smooth as a baby's tummy or as rough as the hands of a bricklayer. Now, if you would take cross session of the skin from your hand or from your heels or from your abdomen or a fingertip, all would be different, but it's all still skin. It's all still skin. And tiny ridges in your fingers allow us to leave a fingerprint. FBI knows where to find you. Uh, females, males shave it. We have a love affair with skin. But males shave it and rearrange the few hairs on the top of our head. And we worry about pimples and expect every mole. Look at every mole. But females expand the ritual. Powdering, laying base, adding blush, curling eyebrows, plucking other hairs that are not supposed to be there, daubing the skin with canvas. And by the time a lady gets ready, she has exposed her skin to 150 different chemicals while she's getting ready in the morning to go out top. Mm. But if the skin is so special, like no other animal on earth, we have to cover it. It's called clothes. We support a billion, billion, billion dollar industry by the clothes that we put on it, by designers and makers in the process. But what is its real function in the body of Christ? In this body, this body that we have called the body of Christ, skin becomes the presence, the outward presence of Jesus Christ in the world in which we live. And people are looking for the real stuff. They want to know what Christianity really is all about, but they can't see Jesus, but they can see you. So what is our skin exuding? What do they see when they look at us? Do they see a person that exudes Jesus Christ? Do they see a church that is doing and living out the life of Jesus Christ within us? Now, it's that seamless body stocking that divines us to the world in which we live, and the church too often has exposed to the world our skeleton. Something scary. When they're looking for something that is loving and touchable and real. And so what are we doing as his 
body in the world in which we live. When the world looks at you, what do they see? There's Jesus walking about in skin. There is Jesus walking about. But the Bible holds this in front of us. Jesus said in John chapter 13, by this all men and women of the world will know that you are my disciples if, if in the church you love one another. So they're looking at the church and within the church, what are they seeing? Turmoil, unrest, when they ought to be seeing love and joy and peace. The, the analogy of skin that is soft and warm and touchable conveys to a hurting world the message that God is alive and eager to relate to every person, to love that creature. We are to let the world see the beauty and the love within the church, within who we are. And as the world touches the church, it's asking, what is the church like? And you and I have that responsibility. And some of us have really been taking it easy the last nine months or so. We've been in, in an interim period, so we've kind of taken a hiatus. Are you still witnessing for the Lord as you should? Are you still letting your light shine out there? It's time that we get back on track as a church. We're going to have a new pastor here one of these days, and we need to be ready to go. We need to be hit the ground running. If we're going to fill this church with people, we're going to have to change, shift gears, get into it, and get it going. I hope that what they see and they feel in our skin, the skin of the Spirit, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we judge and we study people by their outward appearance. The world is looking at us. If you claim you're a Christian, they want to see the real stuff within every one of us. And the, the atmosphere and feeling of a church will be like the skin that reveals a substance that's within us. It covers what's within, but it can be manifested outwardly. But what we have is this thing called a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you think they're happy to see us when we walk around with a frown and being fearful all the time? Here's an interesting story that Beth Wickersham wrote about Jack Easterby, who is a full-time chaplain for the Boston Patriots. For you that are not fans, that's the National Football League, and there's the ones that are having the inflategate going on right now. Poor Brady, he's really getting it. But he's a man walking in flesh in a whole era of life that not many of us would be comfortable in. But let me read what she says. She is a secular person. She is not a Christian. She's a secular person writing for the ESPN magazine. She writes, He, Jack Esterly, challenges those he counsels to be better way, people by the way coaches challenge them to be better players. He speaks to them in language they're familiar with. And the drive of a former athlete. He has written this devotion called A Competitor's Creed. I am a competitor now and forever. I am made to strive, to strain, to stretch, and to succeed in the arena of competition. My attitude on and off the field is above reproach. My conduct is beyond criticism. Whether I am preparing, practicing, or playing, I submit to God's authority and those he has put over me. I respect my coaches, my officials, my teammates, my competitors out of respect for the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice that what she says down here. When your ambition is to give, it tends to bring out the best in those around us. He is so good at helping players understand the opportunity that they have to give to others. What a message for the church. The message is, I care and I give. Now you go and care and give. And then she says, the man is a walking example, a talking example of who Jesus is in the NFL. If we can be a witness there, we can be a witness here in Sexton. So when 
we partake this morning of a communion, we are doing it out of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Your skin to the world that's out there. You and I are being read like an open book, like an epistle, Paul says, known and read of all people. They don't read the book, but they read the people walking around who say they're Christians. So it's time for us to take another look. So how will you be skin this week in today's world where you live and work and talk and function? What kind of skin? Are you showing a jaundice skin? Are you showing a diseased skin? Are you showing a skin that's full of scabs and diseased? Or are you showing the love of Jesus Christ? They can't see him, but they can sure see us. And when they see us, will they see Jesus in us? Good question. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the challenge that the Word gives to us. And it is so practical and so easy to understand. But Lord, sometimes, I know, it's not always easy doing what you've asked us to do. But if a man like Jack can do it in the NFL, leading each chapel time, and being walking about the flesh of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ incarnate. We can do it here. We can do it and make a difference. We can be your witness in your world, in this day, even in the 21st century. So Lord, we're going to partake of the body that was broken for us. And as we do, we understand the relationship when Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Will our body in turn be broken so that we can reach others? This morning, help us to think as we participate in the name of Jesus as we sanctify these next few moments because of you. Amen. Would you that are going to serve with me please come? And the communion service is not exclusively for church members that are here, but if you're a member of the body of Christ, you participate with us because there are no barriers in the body of Christ. He said, come to the table and let us eat and partake. And the only instruction I would give you is please hold that little glass and that piece of bread that represents the body and the blood of Christ. Hold it and then we'll all partake together. So gentlemen, if you would be so kind as to serve us and we will serve you. Paul said that we are to examine ourselves as we eat the bread. And when we examine ourselves, it's a looking within. Lord, have we been skinned this last week? Forgive us. Have we represented you as you want us to represent you? Forgive us. But he said, let a man and a woman examine himself not stay away, but he said, come and eat and drink. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, hallelujah.
Did anybody get missed? You know, isn't it amazing in church how few moments that we stop and be really silent in his presence? We always want to be doing something. We always get so busy, but you know, a few moments like this, just waiting in his presence, meditating, thinking. I continue reading from 1 Corinthians 11. Paul, I've received from the Lord what I am passing on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me, in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord, in remembrance of you. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do you in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Until he comes. Hallelujah. We raise our cup until you come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Until you come. Until you come, we're to occupy. We're to be about the Father's business. We're to do what he's asked us to do while we're waiting and occupy until he comes. There's one more thing that I'd like you to join with me and do this morning. I'm asking again for our pulpit committee, our search committee, if all of the members would come down and join us in front. And church, I want to tell you, this has been a hardworking committee. They have done a thorough job, have done a wonderful job. And if you come forward enough so people can stand behind you, we as a church are going to come and pray again. We've done this before, but it's time we do it again. This committee really is faced with decisions we made a bunch of them, as Jerry said this morning, and we're coming down.
hopefully to the final lap, but they need your help. We really need the assurance of God's direction. This is God's man. This is God's time. We are God's church. And we need you as a church to stand with us. Not to question, but to encourage and pray. We need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for insight. We need to pray for unanimity of purpose. We need all of your help as this decision is made. So church, would you stand? And as many of you as come, come down and join us. Put a hand on the shoulder of each of these. Now, have you ever wondered why it was so important that when they prayed, they laid hands on one another? There's that ministry of skin. Come a little forward. Committee, come a little forward. We get people behind you so we can all begin to pray. And we are going to just ask again, as the anointing was given to the leaders in the Old Testament that were to be the builders of the tabernacle, a special anointing was given for that task. So we can ask for a special anointing on this task today. Now, church, you just pray for us. Just pray for us right now in your own way. Through that point of contact, every member needs your support and your care. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Now, Lord, we come as a church again before you and acknowledging that we need your help. We are not wise enough to make a decision like this. But we need your help in directing us and guiding us. Help us with the insight. Give us the direction we need, Lord. And as we stand together united with a church that cares about us and cares about their future, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now anoint each one of these people for the task ahead. And again, as we meet today, another time again, let direction be clear. May your Holy Spirit confirm to us as you did to the disciples on that day when they had to make a decision about leadership and they said it would seem good to us and to the Holy Spirit. We need that sense. We know that we know that we know because God confirms it in our spirit. Not only do we pray for us, but we also pray for that candidate. Prepare that heart as well. And Lord, prepare that spirit and prepare whoever it might be. A process has been in preparation for a long time for a moment like this. So we pray for that. That man, that family. His help, his care, his insight. What he needs and comfort his spirit and strengthen his spirit so that together again we can say, it is good. It is good to be in God's house. In Jesus' name. Now, many times we've closed a service with a declaration of a blessing. This morning, I'm going to challenge you to bless yourself. Do you ever do an affirmation? Do you ever affirm something in your spirit? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, for example, tells us very specifically, God has said, Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Therefore, we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Now let's make a declaration. Repeat it after me. I declare, I will experience God's faithfulness. I will not worry. I will not doubt. I will keep my trust in Him. I declare I will become everything God has created me to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. You are declaring and setting a boundary. And when you say it, when you hear it, when you speak it yourself,
you're putting something down inside of you. And in order to remember, we need to have, hear and say something repeated at least three times. Let's do it again. I declare, I will experience God's faithfulness. I will not worry. I will not doubt. I'll keep my trust in Him. I declare I will become everything God has created me to be. Yes! Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Yes! Yes! Three times are the charm. Three times. Three times. Are you ready? I declare I will experience God's faithfulness. I will not worry. I will not doubt. I'll keep my trust in Him. I declare I will become everything God has created me to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Give Him praise. Give Him honor. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What would happen in your life if every morning you got up and you made this declaration? Reaffirming on our spirit, preparing our spirit for what God has for us today. Wow. You want to do one more? Let's do one more. I declare, I will ask God for the big things in my life. I will pray bold prayers and expect big and believe big. I will not be intimidated and will not give up. I will pray with boldness, expecting God to show himself strong. Wow. Hallelujah. That's pretty good too, isn't it? That's amazing. God, hallelujah. And that is based on a scripture that we can read this way, Psalm 2.8. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. Glory. Thank you. Glory. Victory ahead. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Move through us with an expectancy and a faith and direction. Glory. Hallelujah. Right, Eddie? It's going to make a difference, doesn't it? Now, just in case some of you need four times. Psychologists say at least seven times we need to hear it. But other people say two to three times is enough. But I sometimes need more than that. One more declaration to go home on. I declare I will experience God's faithfulness. I will not worry. I will not doubt. I will keep my trust in Him. I declare I will become everything God has created me to be. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of that packed in. And if you really hurry, you can beat the Baptist to the... <laughs> God's so good. You've been such a great audience this morning and responsive. God go with you. God go with you. Hallelujah.